It is also the most wonderful time of the year on the gridiron. That is right. We have a full weekend of football here just in time for the holidays. The NFL's Week 16 will feature a slew of matchups with playoff implications. There are still four playoff spots up for grabs in the AFC. In the NFC, just three spots remain, making for a big weekend of action. Let's bring in Scott Pioli. He's the five-time Super Bowl champion and three-time NFL executive of the year. He's also an analyst for CBS Sports HQ and the NFL Network. Scott, welcome. We know the New York Jets lost to Jacksonville on Thursday night. So what does that mean for the playoff picture in the AFC this weekend? You know, last night's game had some interesting implications. I think also it was the first sign of bad weather and how it was going to affect games. But watching the game last night, the Jacksonville Jaguars needed to win three games in order to lock up a playoff spot. They were a team that started off awful this year. But last night they got a big win, and now they only have two games left. If they win their final two games against the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans, they are locked and in the playoffs. On the flip side of that, it was a bad night for the New York Jets. They are not mathematically eliminated, but this certainly reduces the rate of their likelihood of making it into the playoffs. And what we saw last night was interesting. We have two quarterbacks that were drafted in the same year, number one, number two. We see one quarterback ascending in Trevor Lawrence from the Jacksonville Jaguars, who really is going to be one of the next faces of the NFL. And on the other side with the Jets, we saw Zach Wilson going the opposite direction. So Trevor Lawrence from the Jacksonville Jaguars ascending, Zach Wilson headed the other way. Now, as we watch these games this weekend, another big game that's going to be played tomorrow on Saturday is going to be the Bengals at the New England Patriots. And right now, if the Cincinnati Bengals win the remaining three games, they will lock up the division and have a higher seed. But the weather will be tough in New England, and as we know, the weather is a great mitigator. And with the New England Patriots, everyone's talking about how awful that game was last week. But the truth is this. If they win their final three games of the season, they are in the playoffs, and all these games impact the AFC. Scott, let's switch now to the NFC. And personally, I would like to have a very Mm. Merry Christmas, and that would mean the Giants winning for my boys at home right now. So (laughs) tell me what the chances are of that and what other games are you looking at? Well, the, the Giants have a, have a legitimate chance, and it's interesting. Everyone has gotten so excited about the Giants because they started off so strong. But when you really look at the job that Brian Dayball and Joe Shane have done, they have overachieved this year. So right now, I don't know if expectations are managed properly, but your Giants have a shot. You know, as we look at the rest of the NFC, one of the most important games to me tomorrow and interesting games is going to be the Washington Commanders and the San Francisco 49ers. Even though the 49ers have locked their division. They're now playing with quarterback number three, Brock Purdy. They've lost their starter, Trey Lance. They lost their backup, Jimmy Garoppolo. Now the question is, does Kyle Shanahan keep the third and last real quarterback on his roster in a game against the Washington Commanders who are fighting for a playoff spot and also have one of the best pass rushes in the NFL. So it'll be interesting to see if Kyle actually wants to expose his quarterback and how much he will. But it's also a young quarterback who needs the reps. The other game that I really want to pay attention to that's going to be played in the same time slot is the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. The Philadelphia Eagles, if they win out in their last three games, they are the number one seed, which is a huge thing to have. You know you're going to have all home games throughout the playoffs until the Super Bowl if you make it that far. And with the Cowboys, they have to figure out who they are. They have clinched the playoff spot, but they have been as Jekyll and Hyde as any team in the National Football League this year. So they need to win tomorrow just to start getting some confidence against good football teams to prove, again, to themselves who they are. And there's also uh, this weekend another kind of new Christmas tradition. Our friends over at Nickelodeon Mm -hmm. are hosting their annual Christmas Day game. (laughs) You've seen this, Scott, Meg. You've seen it. They fill the the field with digital slime. Some of the favorite Nick characters join in. So, Scott, what do you think this sort of broadcast does for the game of football and its fan base across the country? It is fun to watch. Bradley, I'm a purist and I'm an old guy, but I still love it because to me, what we're trying to do here is, you know, one of the brilliant things about the National Football League is they have always found a way through television. Television is the reason that the National Football League is the most popular sport in our country. And what they've done here is the National Football League and Nickelodeon has figured out a way 
to encourage and find the game attractive to a young audience. The National Football League knows that they have lost some of the audience because there's so many different things to do and so many possibilities for kids. Football started fading away. Now, this is another <laughs> way that the NFL is using television or, you know, the media to build and grow the next generation of viewer. All right. And just shifting gears a little bit, it was a really emotional week in Pittsburgh. The Steelers are set mm. to hold a a retirement ceremony for the team's Hall of Fame fullback, Franco Harris, this weekend. And that ceremony will come 50 years after his immaculate reception and just days mm. after his passing. Talk to us just a little bit about his legacy, what he meant to the game of football, and also to the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, you, Meg, he meant so much to the game of football and the city of Pittsburgh. And, you know, I I'll just speak from my perspective again. I'm 57 years old, so when the Immaculate Reception happened, I actually saw it on TV. It was one of the ways I bonded with my dad as we watched games. And at seven years old, it was this iconic moment that from 1972 on, you saw that play over and over and over again because it was when television was really growing into its own with the NFL. But what made this play not only special was what happened, but it was the person, Franco Harris. And, and, and again, speaking from a personal sp perspective, what I remember at seven years old in 1972, our country is this very interesting place, and television is giving us a lot of information. And here was this running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers that had become not only through that iconic moment, but in the years to come, a very important and one of the best players in the National Football League. And his father was a black man and his mother was Italian. And it made things a lot of very interesting in terms of conversations in certain households, and I will include my own in that. And he had this ability to bring us something and conversations that needed to be had, that weren't being had. And I got the chance to meet Franco years later when I was working for the Cleveland Browns. And it was interesting, you know, when you think back to your childhood memories of being a seven-year-old kid and, and then meeting this person, and they say sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes because you may be disappointed. Mm. The word to me is gracious, just mm. a wonderful wow. man. I love it. I love how that came full circle for you from a seven-year-old all the way to an adult. And what a gracious human being. We've heard so many great things this week about him. Scott Pioli, thank you so much, and I'm going to hold you to it about the Giants. <laughs> Thanks very much. Good luck.